God really cares for me, He cares for you, He cares for every person. He's also prepared to do anything for us that's for our good. That God was present to me and He was interested in me. And I suppose in a way it was even an important moment in my vocation because it made me realize, like I say, God is interested in me. The Mass is simply the place where we encounter God in a way we just can't do anywhere else. And most of all, of course, that's true in the Holy Eucharist. Our Lord Jesus Christ truly becomes present under the forms of bread and wine. I'm part of quite a big Catholic family. I'm the eldest of five children, and I have Catholic parents. They were very good when we were young children. They were very good in teaching us our prayers and making sure we went to church, that we prepared for the sacraments and so forth. And yes, I think some of my earliest memories really would be going to church, especially on Sunday morning, going with the whole family, meeting up with my grandparents as well. And we also used to go to the same parish my, my parents, my grandparents, my siblings. It was always a very special moment on Sunday morning to go to Mass and uh, spend time with the family as well. In many ways, the most important moment of my week, um, because not just was it a time to be with family, but also it was definitely a time to be with God as well. Our, I suppose, every Sunday morning became something really precious in my routine. And uh, all the more so when I became an altar boy, when I became an altar server, which I did just shortly after I made my first Holy Communion. And uh, in fact, it was my grandfather who taught me how to serve the Mass. I remember um, he was very strict uh, in a very good way, and uh, he really took it very seriously, and he wanted to make sure that I took it seriously as well. And uh, being so close to the altar, being so close to the priest when he was saying Mass, being really involved in the whole act of worship which the Mass is, these were things that really impressed me and uh, the Mass did become yeah, the most important thing in my, in my week, but even more than that, the most important thing in my life as well. The Mass is simply the place where we encounter God in a way we just can't do anywhere else. And most of all, of course, that's true in the Holy Eucharist. Our Lord Jesus Christ truly becomes present under the forms of bread and wine. He's there present in such a way that we will never be closer to Him than we can be at Mass, except one day when we get to heaven, please God. But apart from that, the Mass is the place where we will be closest to Jesus here in this life. And it's a wonderful, wonderful privilege. And like I said, when I was an altar boy, that great privilege really became very apparent to me. There are many things you do when you're an altar server that really bring this to life. Even small things like when the, when the priest lifts up the sacred host at the elevation and the altar boy rings the bell. And that was one of my jobs, I remember, when I, when I became an altar server uh, the first time. I was ringing a bell and uh, I thought, why am I doing this? Because I'm doing it because God has become present now. He's here with us, he's here with me on the altar. That was a wonderful thing. Other little jobs I did as an altar server as well, like uh, uh, carrying the candles at the Mass, again, uh, the symbol of, of Christ our light. Or when I was a bit older, when I was a bit more experienced, I was able to do the incense and uh, to swing the, the thurible. Again, especially at the moment of the consecration, when Jesus becomes present on the altar. I think I was also very aware as well, even as an altar boy, that what I was doing on the, on the sanctuary could help other people as well. And I think that's very important. I always say that to the, when I'm, when I'm training altar servers now, that you know, the way that we act on the sanctuary, the way that we take part in the Mass, it helps other people to come to realize the beauty of our faith and especially 
the, the beautiful fact that Jesus Christ is present among us in such a unique and really wonderful way. So I'm very much a London boy. I'm a Londoner. I grew up in London and most of my life has been spent in London apart from when I was at a seminary in Rome. But really, apart from that, I've lived and worked in London all my life. So I'm one of five children. I'm the eldest of five children, so there's me. We were all brought up as Catholics, which was definitely the greatest blessing of my life, really, to be introduced to the Catholic faith so young. Two of my grandparents were converts to the Catholic faith. It's quite an important part of the, the Catholic faith in England, is that we've always been blessed with a good number of people who convert from being Protestants to enter the Catholic Church. Like I say, two of my grandparents made that step themselves. That would have been either just before or just after the Second World War, so in the 1930s and the 1940s. And it wasn't an easy thing to do at that time. England was still a very Protestant country in those days, and to become a Catholic was quite a difficult step. It was a big sacrifice. You know, maybe you were going to leave behind maybe some members of your family who were perhaps prejudiced against Catholics or whatever. It was a big step, and it was not something people did lightly. When people did that, it meant they really were convinced of the truth of the Catholic faith and how important it was to them to, to take this step. So my grandparents were, were a big influence on me. We did often see them on Sundays because we all went to the same church and so we would get together and we'd spend time together. And uh, I would go and stay at their house sometime at my grandparents' house and they always have prayers in their house as well, you know, prayers before meals, prayers before bedtime, those kind of things. And they were big influence as well. So I think, you know, I really, I grew up in a family where there were lots of Catholic practices and, and real Catholic devotion. And it made a big impression on me. When I was quite a young child, there were a couple of really important moments which really, I think, helped to make my faith real to me and really helped me to understand that God is a real person who's really interested in me and active in my life. And it was after that that I became an altar server. And being an altar server, again, being so close to the Mass and the Eucharist and the priest, that was very important. I remember one particular occasion as well, quite soon after I began uh, altar serving, and normally there were always at least two of us who were serving the Mass with the priest, so you weren't by yourself. But on this occasion, I don't know why the other boy didn't turn up, or maybe he wasn't well, I don't know. And he wasn't there, so I was left by myself, and I was still quite a new altar server. And uh, I was very nervous, thinking, can I do this all by myself? And uh, I was really sort of praying to God uh, before the Mass, saying, God, I really want to do this well for you. Please help me to, to get through this Mass by myself, because I'm not experienced. I need your help, but I, I really want to do it well for you. And maybe even more, a bit deeper than that, uh, a little later in my life, I was probably 12 or 13, and I was going to confession. And I was probably at the age where I was starting to find it quite difficult to go to confession in a way. When you're a teenager, sometimes not easy. You don't want to tell the priest what you've done wrong, you know, and uh, it gets a bit embarrassing when you're a teenager, perhaps, for some people. I think I was a bit like that. And I was thinking, do I really want to, to go to confession or not? And I had this experience, really, of God's presence with me and God saying to me, please go to confession, please. It's important to me that you come to confession. And it was a really important moment, and I really just felt that God was present to me and he was interested in me. And I suppose in a way it was even an important moment in my vocation because it made me realize, like I say, God is interested in me and I need to respond to his love for me. I think 
something I have felt all through my life, really, from the time when my parents were first teaching me my prayers and when they were taking me to Mass. And especially, I would say, from the time when I was able to receive the Holy Eucharist and go to communion. From that time onwards, I think, thank God, I would say, throughout my life, I've never doubted God's presence in my life and His love for me. Um, he has always been a loving Father to me. I've always felt that, that, that presence of somebody in my life that I can call on, who really cares for me. And I think that's the point I would like to make, is that God really cares for me, He cares for you, He cares for every person. He has a really personal interest in us. He loves us like a father. He loves us like a friend. He's also prepared to do anything for us that's for our good. But I would certainly say that that awareness of God's love for me and His presence in my life, that has very much deepened since I was ordained a priest. I think that is true of the priest. It's one of the great privileges of the priestly life is to be a really close friend of Jesus, to share in his ministry, to share in his work, to share things which it's true nobody else can quite experience in the same way. I think in my time at university, probably what really helped me to keep my Catholic faith, and actually to deepen my Catholic faith, because my faith definitely grew deeper in those years. What really helped me was having Catholic friends. I would say that was the most important thing uh, which helped me to keep and deepen my faith. I belonged to a Catholic society at university. I helped to run it for a little while, actually. And I was very fortunate we had a very good chaplain to our university. We had mass once a week in, in the university, in the college. I used to go to the Mass and take part in that, and I made friends who also were attending that Mass. When I was at university, obviously, I was studying intensively. In my particular case, I was studying history. And I think it's true to say that in the university environment, by their nature, universities they kind of privilege intellectual knowledge above everything else, so that if you're not careful, faith can be downgraded. It appears to be less valuable maybe than academic knowledge or intellectual knowledge, and perhaps faith can be slightly looked down on or even sneered at. People think, well, faith is for stupid people, people who haven't got enough brains to understand the world as it really is. I think I would say to that that we have to use the talents God's given us. If we've been granted intelligence, we have to use that to understand the world that God has made, and that can be done in different ways. But knowledge by itself cannot make us truly happy. It may contribute to that, and we should use our talents to, to know what God has made and so forth. But true happiness lies elsewhere, and faith ultimately is the key to true happiness. And knowledge without that happiness that comes from faith is ultimately worthless. So I was at university for three years. And I think most young people, if they are able to go to university, they would say these are very exciting, very enjoyable years of your life, very important years as well, when you are, in a way, discovering the world uh, for the first time. You've left home and you're without your family, maybe, for the first time in your life. So. University years are very, very important and can be very enjoyable. But they do have their own temptations, I guess, and I think I, I experience some of that myself. I guess it, there's, there's just so much going on when you're that age, you know, um, whether it be academic things or simply social things, things with friends and so forth, sport, entertainments, um, there's all kinds of things going on in your life. And it can be easy for God to get a little bit pushed into the corner so during the university years, it was also the time when my faith actually deepened and my sense of vocation became clearer as well. 
Although it was a time when there were so many distractions, and in some ways I was living in a more hostile culture than I had done as a child, still I was very aware of God's presence. And it would have come in those ways I've referred to when I was a child, being at Mass, serving Mass, I was still serving, receiving the sacraments, going to confession. And also, I was faithful to my daily prayers, not always as faithful as I probably should have been. Sometimes uh, I was tired, I was up too late maybe, talking and having a good time in the evening. You know, my prayers weren't always perfect. But I did try to be faithful to my prayers, but I was aware that God was calling me to something. And so gradually, I was trying to work out exactly what is it, God, that you want me to do for you? And in different ways, uh, through my friendships, through the chaplain at university, and through this prayer as well, I came to realize that actually God was calling me to be a priest. And that was a great joy to discover that. When I was trying to discern what God was calling me to, it was quite a difficult time in some ways because I felt that God was calling me to something. I felt that he had some purpose and plan for my life. And it took me quite a while to work out what it was. And I remember speaking to various priests to try and get their experience and their advice um, and expertise to help me and guide me. And I, there, I remember one particular occasion, I was talking to a priest called Father Stephen. And as a matter of fact, we were in a pub <laughs> near Oxford Street in, in central London. We went out for a drink one evening and we were talking about this sense of vocation that I had. And after a while, um, Father Stephen said to me, he said, you know, God is calling you to be a priest as well. That's what God wants you to be, he wants you to be a priest. And when he said that to me, at that moment, I really realized it's right. That is what God wants me to be. This is, this is, this is the secret um, that I've been searching for. God wants me to be a priest. And I remember I was so happy uh, walking back uh, to my, my uh, student halls that evening. Um, I was almost dancing along Oxford Street because uh, I was so happy that I had finally worked out what God was calling me to. And it was this wonderful life of, of the priest. The seminary which I was sent to, the English College in Rome, um, has been there for a very long time, for many centuries. And it's quite famous because it trained many of our English martyrs. So we know that at the time of the Reformation and for a couple of centuries after that, it was illegal to be a Catholic priest in England. And in fact, you were at risk of your life if you were caught as a Catholic priest in this country. And so there were these heroic young men who went abroad to Rome, to France, to Spain, to other countries. They went abroad to train for the priesthood. They returned secretly just in order to celebrate Mass and to give Catholics the opportunity to receive the sacraments. And the English college where I studied in Rome, there were 44 of our, our former students who lost their lives, who became martyrs um, for their priesthood. So during those years after the Reformation, they came back to England, they were arrested and eventually put to death, often rather a cruel and horrible death as well in, in London. And it was a very powerful thing to think that you were following in their footsteps. These were men who really understood the priesthood and valued it and knew how important it was to the extent of sacrificing their lives for the sake of being priests. And it made you think, I'm following in their footpath in some way, and this is a really important thing which God is calling me to do. I know that for me in my priestly life, the example of the priestly martyrs who were like me at the English College, they act for me as a kind of examination of conscience in a way as a priest, because they understood and loved the priesthood so much, they sacrificed so much for it. And sometimes 
that can be really useful um, as a reminder to me of what I'm called to be as a priest. The priestly life for me has been an enormous joy, but it has its challenges, let's be honest. It's not always an easy life. It can be very busy, it can be quite stressful sometimes, and you have to deal with people at difficult moments of their life. It's not always easy. The martyrs help me as a priest to examine my conscience. They remind me every day of what I am called to be and what I am called to do. The martyrs, I think we can say, in some ways were the most perfect priests. Every priest is called to follow Jesus Christ as closely as they can. And the martyrs truly did that. They followed him so closely that, just like him, they laid down their lives for their brethren, just like our Lord did. Every priest is called to do that, not necessarily literally in the way the martyrs did, but through our service, through our ministry, through our preaching, through the sacraments, we too are called to give our lives for our brothers and sisters. And the martyrs remind me what that means and to what I am called as a priest. I've always had a great love of history. In fact, my mother was a history teacher and she passed on to me her own love of history. And when I was a little child, I used to love reading history books and it was always one of my favorite subjects at school. When I went to university, I chose to read history there as well. So it's always been a part of my life. And indeed at seminary too, as part of the seminary studies, you have to learn some church history as part of your formation. And as a priest as well, I have continued to develop my, my love of history. As Catholics today, we face many challenges, but it's always good to remember that people in the past faced very similar challenges. With the help of God, they overcame them. So we can learn from history in that way. Also, I've written a few little books um, with historical themes, especially about the saints, the martyrs and other saints as well. Because again, I think we can learn so much from the example of those who've gone before us, who shared our faith, who underwent similar challenges, and again, with the, God, with the help of God, they were able to overcome those. And so I think we can learn so much from history. It's, um, it's uh, something I've always enjoyed, and I'm sure I always will. I've been a Catholic priest for 22 years. And I can say that every day of those 22 years has been an enormous privilege. It has brought me fulfillment and joy in a way nothing else could do. I'd like to say to anybody else who might be thinking that God is calling them to the priesthood, have the courage to say yes, because saying yes to God, again, will bring you happiness and joy in a way nothing else could possibly ever do. Are you searching for answers? Discover your true identity. Stay tuned to Shalom World.